Well, good morning. Uh, welcome to Northwest Air Guns. Uh, I'm John, and today we've got a project here with our Clossing lathe. I picked this up a while ago, and I really like it. It's uh, solid, uh, it does accurate work, but it has a little bit of a vibration in it, very minor vibration, but it still bothers me. And the uh, variable power or vari variable speed also uh, has been a problem in that um, I get down to about uh, 500 um, on the uh, dial and it drops down to the lowest setting. So I got to get that taken care of. I did put a, a new hose on it here um, and tried to bleed it out, but that didn't, didn't work. So we got two things going on. One is the vibration and two is the uh, variable speed drive. Now on the vibration part of it, I went ahead and I bought uh, two new belts, uh, the variable speed belt and the uh, timing belt, they call it. And I got these from a V belt supply uh, because they cost about, I don't know, 20% of what Clossing was gonna charge. And I love Clossing, but I, I just couldn't justify uh, several hundred dollars in belts that I could get for relatively cheap. So what we're going, what we've got here, I've got the manual, and we're going to go through the proce uh, process here of replacing the timing belt, which is the lower one, and then replacing the upper belt, the variable speed belt, and we also. Once we get all the belts off, I want to run the motor just to see if the motor's the cause of the vibration or if it's something else in the drivetrain. Uh, this is the Logan lathe back here behind it that I've put there temporarily while I find some room here in the shop to uh, do something with that. But we're working on this one today. I've got it plugged in and, and it turns out the procedure for changing this belt and that belt are the same with respect to the uh, getting started. The first two or three steps are the same. So let's go ahead and do that. We turn it on, crank it up to the highest speed, turn it off, and then turn the uh, crank here to the lowest speed and, and lock it in place. So that's what we're up to. All right, the manual says pull this outer sheave out here so that the belt becomes loose. Let's see if we can do that. All right, well, I, I tried pulling this outer sheave out and I couldn't get it out. It was uh, stuck in there. And so I had to change plans a little bit. This is uh, 9 sixteenths, I think. So I loosened that to where it's, uh, it's got several threads left on there. But by doing that, I was able to uh, move that sheath, and now the belt is loose. All right, we're down here in, uh, in the front of the, uh, under the headstock. We pulled this cover off. And we're going to remove uh, this hex head screw and the uh, cross piece here. So that's what we're doing. See if we can get that out of there. Our next step is kind of a multiple step, I guess. We got to pull off these uh, four nuts, and then we'll be able to lift the counter shaft and pull this belt off at the top. And once we do that, uh, we should be able to lower it and get this belt off of the bottom, or this belt off of the sheave there. Uh, Uh, 
Well, now we take the entire counter shaft over to the bench. Well, the reason we actually go into all this trouble is because there was a vibration that it could feel uh, when running the lathe at all speeds. It didn't matter. And so I wanted to try running it now without any of the belts and just see uh, if there's any difference or not. So anyway, that's what we're doing here. Here we go. Well, and uh, the answer is, see, there's a hum, but the vibration has sure been minimized. So uh, on that basis, I don't think the motor is the issue. And we'll go ahead and continue to change the belts and get it all put back together and see if it's uh, any better then. Okay, we've got the uh, counter shift here at the bench. What we've got to do now is pull these uh, bearing caps off and then we can get the belt off of here uh, for the, uh, well, both belts actually. So uh, I've already done this end, now we're going to do this end here. And we'll see if they come off easy. Yeah, if, I don't know about you, but I like to use a cheater bar on occasion and uh, get a little bit more leverage on it. So So here we go. Let's get this out of here if we can. There's that end. And there we go. Okay. There we have it. Okay. And the manual says that this is spring loaded. So when we twist this out of here, it will go back together. Yeah, there it goes. I don't know if you can see that, but it's closing up here. This sheet. And there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back together. I'm going to do that off camera. And we'll see what happens with the uh, vibration if it stays gone. I've got a, what is this, 9 sixteenths. Take off the hydraulic hose here. There it is. Okay. And I'm just going to let that drip into there. Then we pull off the um, this nut. All right, well, it took just a little bit of finesse, but there's a snap ring here on the inside of this uh, green thing, whatever that is. So we had to finesse that out and then this shaft we're able to kind of wiggle out of there like so okay we've got this apart I'm not going to take it apart anymore um, but I thought we'd check it and check the vibration issue and see how we're doing with it so let's turn it on Well, you know, there's a hum. It's a real fine vibration. You can actually feel it in the floor just a little bit because we're not bolted down, so. 
Uh, you can see I've got this shaft coming out of the green part. The green part looks pretty good as far as I can tell. There's um, nice and smooth and uh, it looks like it's in good shape. The thing that uh, concerns me here is this shaft here. You can see it's got some wobble to it. Let's see here. Maybe I can find something to put behind it. Uh, you can. There's a little bit of a wobble to it, like so. And I would think there has to be some wobble. And there's also just a little bit of in and out play, maybe uh, 100 thousandths of an inch, if that, maybe 50. Um, and when you turn the machine on, so what I'm going to do, this wobbles all over. Uh, but it doesn't seem to put a vibration through the machine. I can do that. Now if you look at the uh, look at the shaft, you can see it's wobbling as we power down. So my question is, how much wobble can you have on that shaft, and you know, does it need to be replaced or or what? Um, the other uh, option is that uh, a little vibration is okay, and I just got carried away trying to get the vibration out. So if you have any suggestions for me. I'd appreciate it. I'm just going to put everything back together, I guess, with the new belts and um, run it and see if the uh, vibration gets a little better when it's back together or or not. And uh, please comment and let me know uh, what you think of the situation here. Well, we completed our mission. If you recall, we had vibration that was felt up here in the headstock and we were looking to uh, reduce that or eliminate it. And so we replaced uh, the upper belt and the lower belt. We went through the uh, lower unit and cleaned it up and rebuilt it. No new parts other than the uh, hose for the hydraulics. And after that, I'm sorry to say it still has some vibration. Oh, and before I forget, I want to thank uh, one of my machining buds Bob Kors, uh, the unofficial president of our Sacramento Valley Home Shop Machinist Group, uh, for coming and helping me get this all back together. I, I couldn't get the uh, counter shaft unit back in by myself. It was just a little too awkward, so he helped me out there and, and we got it back in. Everything's looking pretty good here. The major problem with these, as I understand it, looking uh, through the forums, is in um, this unit here, there's actually a, a bushing inside that outer uh, sheave, and it uh, wears out, I guess. And then there's that green thing that sticks out from the uh, from the inner uh, sleeve and or the inner uh, pulley sheave, and the bushing slips back and forth as you change speeds on the uh, green. Uh, sleeve in there. Those look good. Uh, no problem with that. So those are not the issue. Um, let's see. Let's turn it on. So right now with just the uh, motor and the bottom belt running to the counter shaft, it feels pretty good. There's very little belt vibration. Pretty happy with that. And then when we uh, turn on the clutch, everything seems to operate pretty well, but we've got quite a bit more vibration now than we have. So there's something going on uh, between the uh, counter shaft and the spindle that's still causing us to vibrate. So overall, uh, we still have bit of a problem with vibration, or at least I'm unhappy with it. Now, the other alternative is that uh, these things just have vibration, and, and that's all there is to it, and as long as it doesn't impact the finishes on your work, then 
don't worry about it. And that may be what I end up doing. One thing that I'm really happy about is that while uh, Bob was here, we went through and calibrated this dial. We, we bled the hydraulic system and calibrated the dial uh, to the actual spindle speed. He brought over a tachometer and uh, we went through the process that's outlined in the manual. Believe it or not, we read the manual on that. And when we got up to the 2000 RPM here on the dial, uh, the tachometer showed it at 1998 RPM. So we're actually two RPM off. Um, but we thought, well, that's close enough. We'll now the procedure we use to bleed the hydraulic line uh, is not actually the one that's shown in the uh, Clossing manual. And I got it from this alternate procedure is one that I got from a guy named Webb who's uh, pretty active on the Yahoo group, I think, and some other forums. And so I'll put that up at the group's IO website um, in case anybody's interested in that alternative uh, way of bleeding the hydraulics. And it worked for us. Instead of bleeding from the top, we bled from the bottom and it worked out great. That's about it. I'll uh, put the covers back on and we'll start making some parts. And as long as I can stand the vibration, uh, I think I'll leave it the way it is. I really like the uh, variable speed drive. It's just super convenient. Um, like I say, if I get to where I, I don't like it, I'll switch this over, or at least consider switching it over to a VFD system and eliminate the Reeves drive altogether. Uh, there's a couple of guys over at the Groups IO forum uh, for the Clossing users uh, that have either done that, uh, swapped over to the VFD, or they're in the process of doing it. So there will be some help there. Um, and with that, uh, let's start making parts.